In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. You're faithful, probably heard the expression, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, because, well, you're unprepared for that sort of conflict, and the, the fight is not, it's not fair. There's no match at all there. And the gun, when it was invented, not the gun, the handheld, the personal firearm, it was called the Great Equalizer because it enabled someone with relatively little strength or, or skill and training, right, to be able to take down someone much larger and stronger than, than themselves. In the spiritual life, we have an enemy who is very strong. The principalities and powers were told by St. Paul. So these angels are created by God, these, these perfect spiritual beings have an immense power we can't even imagine. And he points out the ways that they, they attack us. They deceive us. The world itself is ruled by this dark power. And these angels, as I said, have immense intelligence and power. And imagine a con man dealing with a child, trying to you know, take something from a child. Pretty easy to get something from, from a baby, right? Well, an angel is, is much greater than a con man, and we are much less than a child in this comparison. And that's what we have to fight against. St. Francis de Sales said, in, in reference to temptation, I am attacked so violently that it seems to me as if all power of resistance were wanting to me, and that I should fall short if the opportunity offered itself. He's saying that all I need to fall is an opportunity, and it seems like I'm going to fall for sure. And if the saints are going through this, then what what chance do we stand in the face of temptation? Our weakness is primed to fall, as we have so often done. The enemy is so crafty, he deceives me again and again. I even fall prey to the same exact trap that I did last week or the week before, the last temptation. Do the same thing, and then I look back and go, wait a second, why did I, why did I do that again? And it seems that I don't have a chance, and I can't get out of, I can't get out of this temptation, I can't get out of sin. Well, the key in this fight is to use the right weapons. If we try to face the devil by ourselves, we are like that, that the, the poor fool that brings the knife to the gunfight. St. Francis de Sales continues in the quote I just read from you. He doesn't stop there. The second part of it is, But the weaker I feel, the more my confidence in God grows. For I am confident that God even in the presence of the objects of a sinful desire, would impart to me so great strength that I could destroy my enemies as young lambs. So the weaker that he feels, the more confidence he has in God, because he knows he will give him the strength that he needs. Be strengthened in the Lord and in the might of his power, St. Paul says. So despite all of our weakness, it does not matter. We can overcome because we can put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the deceits of the devil. So the father of all lies, the seducer from the beginning, he's a roaring lion going about in the night seeking whom he may devour. He's much more clever than we are. He's going to deceive us, but we are armed with the armor of God. So we can... We can... Um, we can take on this. So the seducer is usually not going to attack us by a frontal attack directly. He's not going to represent the sins in their true form. He's going to put them under the appearance of an indifferent thing or even virtue. And the armor of God is going to help us discern this. Now, for example, try, the devil tries to play off pride as, as a noble self-esteem or avarice as, as efficient economy. Or injustice is just good financial planning, good financial savvy. He can, he can mislead us from the good. A very uh, common one is to distract us from doing our duty of state by something that is either indifferent or even apparently good. Right? Um, for a student, and I should be doing my homework, but if it presents something else, like, oh, just take a break. You worked hard. Take a break and do this. And then an hour and a half later, still have not come back to my duty of state. It seems like a good thing, 
but it goes either, t- maybe the break was necessary, but it goes too far. So he begins by ensnaring us that way. Well, for someone, a mother or her father who has a family and many children to take care of, the devil might even push them to pray more or to give time to, to God. Of course, we need to give time to God. But if it takes away from taking care of your children, then that is not God's will for you. That's the devil disguising himself as an angel of light. It's easy to fall prey, and we all have. We have to watch out because the devil, he attacks our weakness. But this is a supernatural battle, so we're not, we don't have to be clever ourselves. God will give us the grace to know. As one author says, The devil is a chained dog. He can only go as far as God allows him to, and then he's stopped. We only get bit if we go close. If you stay away from the chained dog, you won't get bit. It's pretty simple. Um, God is not going to allow a temptation stronger than we are able to overcome. But we have to use the supernatural means, not just our own natural power, our own intelligence or strength. Some of these supernatural means are actually quite simple. They're not super long prayers or anything like that. It's the sign of the cross. It's holy water. The devil flies away from holy water. Use it. It's a supernatural means given to us by God in in order to strengthen us in this fight. Uh, The various sacramentals they have, the scapula, the miraculous medal, pious images, all these things can be of of help to us. The the exorcisms that are used, the prayer of St. Michael, of course, and the various other exorcisms that are used in even the blessing of holy water, for example. All these things are given to help us in the supernatural battle. I mean, who here can say they were not strengthened by a single Hail Mary in the time of temptation? One Hail Mary. The principalities and powers cannot stand against one Hail Mary. Do we actually believe that when we say it? And it does strengthen us. We may feel weak, but the strength is there when you call upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she will send the devil flying. So this armor is is both the strength, but it's also a savvy, right? Figuring out how the devil is attacking us and remembering with the with the with the help of God, with the help of his grace, so that we don't fall prey to the same thing. I'll give you an example. In in World War II, the panzer tanks were feared by everyone. The tiger tank, you know, it's just these massive tanks that were unstoppable. And the Americans had Shermans. The Shermans were much smaller, and their armament was not sufficient to pierce the armament of the Panzers head on. And if they shoot, they just the shells would just bounce off. Right? So they seemed unstoppable. However, the Panzers had a weakness. There was no armor in the back. And there were such big, heavy machines. The, Sh- the Shermans were a little faster and more mobile. They would use tactics to get around behind and then shoot the Panzers from behind. Well, that's what we have to do with when it comes to temptation. We don't necessarily have to overcome it directly face to face, but with the grace of God, the savvy of God, to try to sneak around and take the enemy from behind, right? And also be wary that the enemy may be trying to do the same thing to us, right? But God's grace gives us the light to be able to understand that and not fall prey to temptation. Think about this. Our armor is God himself. When you receive Holy Communion, you, Emmanuel, God with us, he is within us. So why do we fear? There's no, no dart of the enemy that can pierce that armor. God is our armor. He doesn't just give us some piece of metal and say, good luck. Right? He stays with us, abide with us. And the Holy Trinity makes our abode within us. It's a real superpower that we have. Not like these fake stories, the superheroes that put on a cape and do around, do crazy things. No, no, this is real, and it's much more, it's much greater than that, than that sort of power. Yes, it is a violent struggle. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent bear it away. It is a fight. We can't hide that. We must not shy away from the fight, though, because we do have the strength of God. So have confidence. God will give the strength. St. Paul points out what, more specifically, what these, these armor, what this armor is. You know, the, the preparation of the gospel. Um, excuse me. Yeah, 
your loins girt about with truth. So he's talking about having the sight of truth always before us. So we're not deceived by the by the devil. No, whatever the temptation is, the truth remains. Like hell is not it's not worth this little moment, right? To give up heaven for this moment. Keeping that truth always in our mind is going to help us overcome temptation, right? The the breastplate of justice. So to live according to the gospel, live according to the law. That's going to arm us against the darts of the enemy if we're actually practicing the gospel. Looking at the gospel today to reference that, you know, are we actually forgiving other people? Or are we living a hypocritical lie, right? Asking for forgiveness, being forgiven, and then being harsh and throttling our neighbor. Right? If we're not trying to do that, then we're not armed against the temptations ourselves. Right? The, pre- the feet shod with the gospel of peace, which is a zeal for the word, the word of God. Uh, nourished by the word of God, protected by God's word. That's both reading the, the gospel and trying to spread that gospel by example, first and foremost, but by word as well. You know, the shield of faith, believing in God, can stop everything. No matter what the deceits are, no matter how strong they are, the faith is our shield. And finally, the helmet of salvation, which is a, an, an, a, a figure for, for hope hope for eternal life. I'm not going to give up eternal life for the sake of this temptation here and now. Like, no, I look to eternity. All this difficulty, the suffering they have to go through, fighting against temptation, all these things are just a moment as I look forward to eternity. So we're encouraged by St. Paul to learn how to use these weapons, to practice with them as we prepare by the smaller conflicts for the larger ones, and thus... We will face with the might of God all the trials that come our way, all this, the sinful desires and temptations that happen to us, however terrifying. We can overcome humbly by remaining in dependence upon God. Remember how the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is to crush the head of Satan, how did she overcome Satan? Behold the handmaid of the Lord, servant of God. He who is mighty has done great things in me. He who is mighty has done great things in me. And so God can do great things in you as well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.